Good afternoon, everyone. Illinois Extension is happy to host this final Bead Challenge Lunch and Learn prior to the deadline for submissions, and we will welcome back Devin Bronstein from the Illinois Office of Broadband and Shabikar Agawal from the Illinois Broadband Lab. They will provide any review and responses to your questions about this process as you finalize your efforts. And we thank them both for having continuous outreach and assistance with Illinois communities across the state for really the last six months around this bead mapping challenge. Uh, remembering we had our first session mid-October last year and the materializing of resources and knowledge and engagement has truly been a pleasure to see. And again, we thank both Shubika and Devin and without further hesitation, I'll pass it over to you now, Devin. Great, thanks so much, Nancy. Hi everyone, good afternoon. Um, so welcome to today's weekly Bead Challenge webinar. Um, as hopefully you saw in an email yesterday, um, given that this is the last week to submit challenges, uh, today will be all review content. So we'll go through our usual intro slides, uh, kind of setting the scene for BEAD and the BEAD challenge process. And then we'll go through uh, some, some more demos of the portal um, and take questions, happy to walk through specific scenarios that folks are most curious about. So we can use this time, I think, however folks want. Um, so if you are on this call, but you feel like you're an expert, uh, you know, feel free to have us on in the backgrounds or hop off. Just want to be cognizant that this will be review. All right. Um, so we'll go through recap items. We'll do a recap of the new dashboard that is now available. And then we'll walk through the challenge portal and the different ways to submit a challenge. Our main objective for today is make sure that everyone feels comfortable and knowledgeable on how to submit a challenge by the March 18th deadline. Here's our recap of the BEAD program. Illinois was allocated $1.04 billion to connect all unserved and underserved broadband locations in the state over the next five years. Um, and the BEAD challenge process is helping us identify what those locations are and how to prioritize them. So this is our timeline. Uh, we are still uh, here in the challenge phase. So ahead of this, we had pre-registration. We had a week uh, where all of the eligible locations were available, actually much longer than a week. I think we started this process earlier and now we are in the challenge phase. So between February 27th and March 18th at 1159 PM Central Time, we are accepting challenges through our challenge portal. Um, so that is what we will focus on today. Following the close of the challenge phase on March 18th, we'll go into a one month challenge validation. So all of the challenges that come in will be reviewed um, in an impartial, unbiased way. Um, and then we'll make a, a call for each of them on whether they're complete, whether they're valid and ready to be passed on for rebuttal. Then the rebuttal process is another 21 day period. So we as an office will post all challenges um, their sort of final state coming out of the challenge phase. And then some will be passed along directly to internet service providers who will have the opportunity to provide other rebuttals with evidence. And then a couple of them will be available for open rebuttal. So any eligible challenger can take a look at our dashboard, uh, view a challenge and then submit a rebuttal. So expect more webinars uh, about the rebuttal process later um, in March, early April, um, and we'll be sure to answer questions about sort of evidence specific to rebuttals as that gets a little bit closer. And then finally, we'll go through the adjudication phase where we take in the rebuttal information, compare it to what we have uh, for the challenge phase, and then make final calls on each location. Um, then this will lead to us generating a final data set, handing that over to NTIA for their final approval and then this will inform um, our BEAD subgrantee process going forward. Here's our overview of the challenge process. I will recap this briefly. Um, so hopefully you know this by now, but it's the purpose of the challenge process is to make sure that our state's broadband map accurately reflects um, everyone's homes and organizations access to broadband. And this is important because it will inform which locations are eligible for funding. Units of local government, nonprofits, and internet service providers can uh, submit challenges directly through our portal. And if an individual wants to participate, 
they can do so by collecting their evidence and passing it along to one of these organizations to submit on their behalf um, or take speed tests on their own at speedchallenge.org and I'll have a slide on that soon. Anything on the map can be challenged. So whether this is whether broadband is available at a location, whether the speeds and the latency are accurate um, and lots of other challenge types. And the challenge phase will be open from February 27th through Monday, March 18th at 11.59 p.m. And our overall challenge process is 120 days, which kicked off on February 20th. Um, these are our key terms that we like to uh, frame on in the beginning of the conversation. So every location is known as a BSL, a broadband serviceable location. So as we look at that map, Every, every circle, a little dot on the map is known as a BSL. As compared to a community anchor institution or CAI, these are the squares on the map. Um, so these are not homes or businesses, but rather institutions that provide critical services and support to residents. Um, and we have our sort of explanation of what a CAI is in our user guide, but this could be a library, a hospital, um, a health center, a school, various sorts of nonprofits that focus on employment services, senior services, reentry support, and so on and so forth. Um, unserved, underserved, and served are how we classify every location based on the broadband that's available. So unserved, those are the green locations on the map now. These are locations where based on our data, um, there is no broadband available. So these will be first in line for uh, bead funding to connect them to broadband. Um, and we define broadband as 25 over three megabits per second based on the FCC's definition. If a location has that 25 over three connection, but doesn't yet have 100 over 20 connection, it will be yellow on the map and will be considered underserved. Um, so this is kind of second priority for funding. A location can also be considered underserved based on its latency. So latency you can see on a speed test, um, but if the latency is greater than 100 milliseconds or MS, it could be considered um, and classified as underserved. And last, served are locations that do have access to um, 100 over 20 megabits per second or higher connections. This is the full list of challenge types. So you can see the first set are challenges to broadband serviceable locations. Um, so availability, speed, and latency are going to be, I think, common ones that we'll see. This means that you're challenge challenging whether or not um, service is available at that location based on what you see on the map, the speed, the latency, um, whether the technology is correct. The next grouping are all around enforceable commitments or plan service. So if you're an internet service provider and you see something on the map that um, you have a grant, uh, grant to uh, deploy broadband there and you can e demonstrate that with evidence um, or you have plan service by uh, coming live um, by June of 2024, tell us that through the plan or existing service challenge type um, or enforceable commitment. And then finally, uh, community anchor institutions. If you see a location on the map that is just a circle, so it's a BSL, um, but you know that it is a community anchor institution, um, you can submit a challenge type C, location is a CAI, and we'll just ask for the name of that CAI, the address, um, and some proof that it is indeed a library or school um, community center. So that could be the website, um, something on Google Maps. Um, a listing in a, in a directory, something like that. We'll also accept the reverse. So if something is marked as a CAI on the map, but it has since closed down or transitioned to be a business, um, you can challenge that using the location is not a CAI. And then if you wanna challenge the speed um, at a CAI, you can use that same speed uh, challenge type. One additional flag here on the CAIs, um, if you see a location where the address is incorrect, uh, feel free to submit that through the location is a CAI challenge type. And just in the explanation note um, that the address is incorrect and you are sharing the correct address. So 
so pre-registration has been going on for a couple of months now, um, but pre-registration is required in order for us to verify that you are an eligible challenger. Um, and once we do that, you'll be whitelisted on the portal and then you'll receive an invitation email from broadband at illinois.gov with instructions on creating your account. This is a snapshot of uh, what that registration process looks like. So again, look out for an email from broadband at illinois.gov. Um, in the subject line, it'll say invitation to challenge portal, something like that. And then there will be a link that brings you to the portal. It'll ask for your email address, your name, and a password. So just make sure that your email address is um, lined up with the one that you received the invitation to. Um, after you uh, register in the portal, you'll receive an email from verification at ilbroadbandmapping.org. Um, and then we ask that you click a link to validate your account. We have heard of a couple of instances where this has gone to uh, folks spam or junk mail. So uh, please be sure to check that if you are not getting that email. And if that doesn't work, don't hesitate to reach out to us at broadband at illinois.gov with your um, challenge and we will get it resolved as soon as we can. Um, one more note on this is that we are, um, we have been accepting pre-registration. There is a turnaround time between uh, pre-registration and then actually getting your portal credentials. So we are asking folks to do that by today, end of day, um, to make sure that we can create your account in time. This is a snapshot of beadchallenge.org. So if you are a resident or you uh, work with residents who wanna participate in the challenge process, um, we are encouraging folks to take speed tests on their own three times over three separate days at beadchallenge.org. Um, knowing that we only have around four business days left in the challenge phase, we're asking that folks start their series of three speed tests no later than today. Um, and then complete the three speed tests on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, which will give the team on the back end time to download and consolidate, clean up all of that data to submit the relevant uh, speed tests as challenges. Um, a couple of reminders, we encourage you to move close to your router when you complete the speed test. Um, you can also plug into your router with an ethernet cable. Make sure that others in the home are not streaming video or gaming. Um, so you want to make sure that while uh, folks in your home are not using a lot of bandwidth, you can do this during uh, the sort of busy network time, 5 to 10 p.m., uh, to see what your speeds would be when the community-wide network may be a bit more stressed. Um, a reminder to do this three times over three separate days. And very importantly, at the bottom of the form, it asks for your information. So name, email address, address. Um, and a very important reminder, it asks for you to attest to the current speeds that you subscribe to. So these are the speeds that you pay for. Um, this could be on your monthly bill. This could be on your account on the Internet Service Provider's website um, or the mobile app. And if you can't find it in any of those places, uh, please feel free to call them and request the speeds because that is something that you as a paying customer um, you know, should be able to get should you ask them but we cannot accept uh, the speed test as part of the challenge process without knowing what you currently subscribe to. So that is of the utmost importance. Um, if you've taken speed tests and you are not sure if you provided the right information in that field, um, feel free to just take another speed test and, and update that information and we'll be able to match that to your email uh, with the nonprofit who's working on this. Um, so, yeah, please take your last speed test this Friday, March 15th, to make sure that it is included. All right, a couple of resource reminders before we go into our demos. We have a new uh, Beach Challenge dashboard, which I'll walk through in a little bit. Um, but you can go on here to actually see the current number of challenges that have been submitted, what they are, um, and different details about that, which I'll show in a moment. We have an instructional video, so if the webinars are not your thing and you just want to go straight to the portal, um, feel free to check out this video on YouTube. The link is right here, and you can watch a demo of how to create an account, go through the portal, and submit a challenge. We have our landing page where all of this uh, lives. 
And then our user guide, this is going to be the most helpful thing if you have questions about the process, about evidence, about, you know, I know I have a, an issue, but I don't know which challenge type it falls into. Uh, the user guide is going to be a very helpful tool. We also have our timeline, similar or the same as what I shared in the beginning of the presentation. Um, and then we have all of the availability status of locations available for download on our website, along with bulk challenge CSV templates, which are also right in the portal. And a final reminder about our office hours. Um, so our last day for office hours during the challenge phase will be tomorrow. Uh, we have those at 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. for an hour. So just uh, click the Zoom link and then you'll be taken into the waiting room um, and we'll kind of work with folks one at a time. So if your issue is confidential, um, you don't have to worry about other people kind of hearing your question. Um, and of course, uh, feel free to email broadband at illinois.gov with challenge process in the subject line so we can get to your question right away. All right, so um, I will pause there on the slides and now just give a quick preview of um, our dashboard, which we shared last week, but there have been some, some upgrades to it and it, there's a bit more information there now. So I'll just walk you through that to make sure that you can use this as a tool. So hopefully you're seeing this dashboard. Um, I'll point out a couple of things. On the left-hand side here, there are a couple of tabs. So the first one is challenges. Um, so every yellow dot on this map is a challenge that has been submitted. Um, important to note, as the disclaimer on the bottom left-hand corner says, is that these are all submitted challenges. They have not been validated yet. So um, the number of submitted challenges that you see here may be different from what actually goes to rebuttal. Um, and what impacts the final map. This is just everything that is coming in. We're sharing it on the map so you can follow along. Um, you can then zoom in, click on different challenges for details, view them on the right-hand side. Um, you can see the location. You can see the type of challenge, the provider, um, and different information here. And if there's more than one challenge at a location, you'll be able to tab through and see those, like this one. We have a new tool here where you can search for a filter by a provider. So if you wanted to um, look for challenges related only to a certain provider, you could do that. And then clear it. Um, you can also search for an address or a zip code here. Next, we have CAI challenges. So these are challenges to community anchor institutions, similar features here. And then area challenges. So as a reminder, if uh, six or more of the same challenge type um, against the same provider with the same technology type are submitted in one census block, um, that constitutes an area challenge. So it sort of triggers a challenge for the whole census block and then the provider in their rebuttal will need to demonstrate that they can provide service or that they can meet that need and whatever is being challenged. Um, so if you are you know, trying to coordinate your challenges, this will be a helpful tool for you to understand where there are area challenges in progress or where they may have been completed. Um, so the orange is area challenges in progress. So you can see here, uh, there are two challenges in this group. And then the pink areas, um, this one, there are 64 challenges. So that is uh, way above six, meaning it qualifies as an area challenge. Similar to over here. And last, I'll point out this new feature. We have a little dashboard here called Overview. You can see the total number of challenges we've received so far, uh, the total, total number of registered challengers. Um, and then this information on the right-hand side is uh, from the last 24 hours. So 409 challenges submitted in the last day, um, eight new challengers 
that have been registered in the last day. Um, being registered means you uh, go onto the portal and activate your account. And then down here, we have uh, 5,776 locations that have been challenged. And uh, one final thing I'll point out is that because the speed test data through beadchallenge.org will be uh, sort of evaluated and downloaded ahead of the, the very end of the challenge process to make sure that um, you know folks are able to submit speed tests up until the very last moments, those are not reflected on here. So if you are worried because you don't see your speed test challenges, um, they will just be available a little bit later after the close of the challenge phase. Before I move on, are there any initial questions on this dashboard um, that we can help address? Otherwise, I'll save the other questions for the end. Okay. Moving right along then, and you know, just to reiterate, um, this is review, so um, this may seem duplicative, and that is because we want to make sure that folks are crystal clear on how to submit challenges, um, and we can answer all of your questions. So I'll do um, a quick demo of how to submit a challenge through the map, and then I'll pass it over to my colleague Shubika to share a little bit about uh, bulk challenge submissions. So this is our bead challenge map. Um, bead.connectednation.org forward slash Illinois. Um, anyone can access this map. So if you have residents who are interested in participating or weighing in, um, anyone in the world can access this map and kind of check out the status of different locations and different communities. Um, and they can also save challenges or save locations in their challenge shopping cart. Um, and then I'll highlight where the dividing line is between what anyone can access and what just challengers can access. So I'll go ahead and do a demo here. Um, if anyone has an address or a zip code that they would like me to use as the guinea pig, feel free to drop it in the chat. Otherwise I'll just pick a random location. not seeing anything. So I'll just go to the last one I searched for. So you can search for an address, zip code, anything you want in the left hand side, and that takes you to a certain area of the map. So you can see here that there are a lot of yellow dots, which means um, that these locations are underserved, so they have access to 25 over three, but not 100 over 20. And then you can see a couple of greens, which means that they don't have access to any broadband. Um, and then this green square, this is a community anchor institution, and because it's green, it is eligible for funding. Um, so let's say I wanna challenge um, a couple of these locations because even though they're marked as underserved on the map, maybe I have a resident who told me that there's actually no service available at those locations. So I'm gonna grab a couple here, and then I'm gonna click add to challenge. Then everything will be under this tab called new challenge. And they're all, they're all here. If you changed your mind, you can always remove something from a challenge, look at them in a table format. Sometimes that's a little bit easier. And then if you're ready to go, and again, you can turn back at any point, but if you wanna keep moving in the process, submit challenges is what you click next. So this takes you to the portal. If you have not logged into the portal um, or your email hasn't been whitelisted, you will not be able to see this page. You'll be prompted to log in. So if you haven't been in the portal yet and you think you want to participate, I encourage you to, um, to follow the instructions in the invitation email and visit the portal as soon as you can to make sure that we have time to troubleshoot any issues that you might run into. Um, so this is kind of that dividing line of what anyone can do and then only what eligible challengers can do. 
Um, so we are now in the portal. And if you're bringing over locations from the map, um, this is the first thing that you'll see. So it asks, do you want to assign a challenge type for all of these locations at once, or do you want to assign them individually on the next page? So the reason that you might want to assign for all locations at once is because they're all the same challenge type. If some are speed and some are availability, you would opt to click individually um, and then assign them on the next page. So for now, I'll say that these are all, uh, let's go with availability challenges. And then if you selected both locations, BSLs and CAIs, they will be split up into two groups here. So you'll have to select CAI here. Um, maybe this one we wanna challenge location is not CAI. And then click continue. So then, so I have a lot of challenges here because I've been doing all of these demos, um, but really you'll just look at the, the first two here um, or the first set of rows here. So we can see March 13th, 1228 PM. That sounds like right about now. Um, so once they're in your view draft challenges page, the first thing that you'll wanna do is click on edit and then fill in the remainder of the details. The good thing about grabbing these from the map first is that you don't need to worry about filling in the location ID or CAI ID, it is carried over automatically. So we've been recommending, unless you have over 50 challenges coming from the map, will just make your process a lot easier. So here, this is a location is not a CAI challenge. Um, so here I'll just write the CAI entity name. So let's call it, you know, Firehouse X. Um, and then I wanna say um, the CAI type is wrong. So maybe it's categorized wrong, um, or sorry, that's, that is for a different one. For not a CAI, you're gonna want to look for um, category codes that are applicable to the R type, which is location is not a CAI. So you could say um, the location just is not a CAI at all. Maybe it's a house, maybe it's a business. Um, you could have an explanation and other if there's something else wrong with it. Um, if the CAI has closed, you can click this. CAI has seized operation. CAI is a private residence or non-CAI business. Um, or location does not require fiber broadband service appropriate for the CAI. So you'll pick the one that is most relevant to you. I'm going to say CAI has seized operation. And then in the explanation, I'll say firehouse is now closed and yeah. So next I'll save my draft. The next step is to upload evidence. So um, I'll be asked to select evidence and this will prompt me to upload a file. Um, so I would do that. Evidence for something like this could be a screenshot of their website, a screenshot of Google Maps, something saying that this location is no longer open that demonstrates that. Um, and then once I add the evidence, I will click submit and it will go into my submitted challenges here. And you can always check back here, um, download the past evidence that you've submitted, export it as a CSV, anything that you wanna do to just remind yourself what challenges you may have submitted. The second way to create a challenge, so the first way was through the map, the second way is directly through the portal. I only recommend going this route if you already have the location ID or the CAI ID for that location. Um, it's a lot easier to go through the map, but if you would like to initiate a challenge here, you can. So you click on create new challenge and then same sort of steps. You'll click on the challenge type. Um, You'll want to type in the ID number, which you can grab from the map. You'll type in the provider. Um, so here you can actually start typing to see recommendations. So let's give an example. So you can see Verizon pops up here. If there's a building unit applicable, you'll type that in here, uh, meaning you know it's a multi-dwelling unit building and you're only challenging apartment two, for example. You'll select the technology that you're challenging. And one important clarification here is that um, 
the technology that you're challenging must currently be marked on the map in that location. Otherwise, your challenge won't be valid. So just to give you an example, we can go back to this map. So let's say we're challenging this location. You can't just challenge a location. You have to be challenging something about a location. So in this case, there's providers. Let's say I want to challenge Rise Broadband. Maybe I, I know someone who lives here, um, and they said that they can actually get those 25 over 5 seats. So Rise Broadband would be the provider name that I typed into this form. And then technology, I can see here, fixed wireless license by rule. So we'll select that from here. Note that there is fixed wireless and then license by rule fixed wireless. You can kind of ignore terrestrial. Um, those are really the two differentiators to look for. So I click license by rule. And then this is a residential service. So I click residential. Um, and the challenge type I had selected here was latency. So to get to this point, I will have completed three speed tests and my median latency. So the middle number um, will have been above 100 for this to be a valid challenge. So let's say my measured latency is 130. I would save a draft. Oh, and if I needed to grab the location ID, I should be able to copy and paste it from here. Then the next step is to upload evidence. Um, so for a latency challenge, my evidence will need to be a demonstration that I took three speed tests over three days. So they could be screenshots of those three speed tests showing the three latency numbers. Um, and making it very clear that the middle number is what I put in this form, 130, and is above 100. So I would select the evidence, upload it, and then go ahead and submit it. Um, a, one more reminder before I pass it on to Shubika is um, there's a couple of tools at the top here. This map button takes you back to the connected nation map. So this map and then my account, if you want to uh, see what email address you're logged in with, you can click on my account. And then support information on the left um, is information about um, how to get help. So if you click on this document, this should be a, a view only shared document about different resources, Zoom links, and some common questions. All right. So with that, I will stop sharing, if I can find that one, and pass it on to Shubika to do a recap on bulk challenges. That was unmute. Thanks, Devin. So sharing my screen now. And I think um, this is the option that you'll be using when you've already looked at the maps, you have access to the fabric, or you've collected uh, the location or CAI IDs from the B challenge map. So the option to submit challenges using the submit bulk challenges option here. We have a different CSV template for each of these different challenge types that you can directly download from here. Um, for the purpose of this demonstration, I've already downloaded an availability file and filled it out with some data. So I'm going to choose that file, um, open and upload. So for, again, for the demonstration, just to show that, you know, there could be errors in the data that you've uploaded, might be missing some information or some data wrongly entered in there. So we have a few initial validation steps that we go through as we're collecting and like, you know, proceeding with the next steps of this submission. So try to be as descriptive as possible. So on here, it says um, error converting column location or CAI ID cannot convert non-finite values um, to integer. So I'll not be able to proceed with this. So I'm gonna go back to my um, file here and it's the availability sample. 
uh, and I'll try and see what's wrong. So it told me that there was some issue with the location or CAI ID column. And I see that, you know, one of those is missing. So it, it told me that there's an um, NA value there. So just for this example, I'm really going to pick up the accurate location ID that I should have included. But for this example, just putting this one on here so that I have it there. And that was the only error that it showed me. So I'm going to save it again and go back to my portal, choose file, availability sample. It's going to take a while to process the submission and see if everything's accurate. So there's another error which says row one. So now again, it's getting really specific with like in the first row, uh, there's an error in the technology code where it's an, it's not a recognized value 62 that does not attribute to a specific technology. So I'm going to go back to my file again and see what's happening. So yeah, I do have a 62 one there. Um, ideally, I would look at like, you know, what exactly am I challenging? So with all of these other locations for the same provider, it's 10, which is a DSL or copper service that's available. So I'm just going to make that change. I wrongly entered 62 on there. So making that change and saving it again. Uh, hopefully this time it goes through. So choose file. Um, availability sample, upload. Okay, so all the errors rectified. And now this basically breaks down the submission by provider. So in the CSV that I had created, I am challenging service for four different providers that are listed here with their provider IDs. Uh, and all of this information about the technology code, the provider ID, all of that can be found in the appendices of the user guide that Devin had earlier mentioned. So definitely use that if you have any questions around what is the exact value that I should be entering into these specific fields. So on here, it gives me a breakdown of number of challenges by provider, and I have the option to upload my evidence file. Um, Depends on how you're submitting it. If there are multiple files in the evidence, we are recommending the following format for naming each of the files. So location ID, underscore technology code, underscore provider ID. That is how we'd want you to name it. So for this example, I have a PDF here that I am going to attach and say complete submission. Uh, so then it goes to my submitted challenges. I can download the evidence that I had submitted. Again, this is a sample. So just showing you how it'd be most helpful for us to go about this. A placeholder image, this would ideally be a screenshot uh, from the provider website or maybe some kind of communication. But we do have like the location ID underscore technology underscore provider ID information just so that for somebody who's reviewing this data, it's easier for them to just look up the evidence for that specific challenge uh, that they are reviewing. So we go about this process and that's how the submissions made. One note here for bulk challenges, if I choose my file on here, availability sample and say open and upload, so I go to the next here, uh, next step, but I don't have my evidence file ready. Uh, this doesn't get saved as a draft. So if you are actually working with bulk submissions, just make sure you have the CSV and also the evidence files ready at the same time so that you can complete the process because um, this does not translate into the draft challenges page if you were to just like, you know, if you weren't able to complete the step of the process. So that's a quick demonstration of the bulk challenges. If we have any specific questions related to this or anything that we shared today, or as you are preparing for the challenge process, uh, we can get started with those. Thanks, Shubika. And I'll just um, re-emphasize the point about the draft challenges or lack thereof for the bulk submission. So, um, you know, we built this portal specifically for this process. I think if we ever do a challenge process again, we'll certainly make it a little bit more 
clear to understand when you're actually submitting the bulk challenge, when it goes into your draft challenges that so you do have a chance to look over. Um, so if you are submitting bulk challenges, just be mindful that after you upload your CSV and you upload upload your evidence, there's some language that says, you know, don't click this unless you're ready to submit your challenge. Um, if you aren't sure, feel free to click cancel, look at everything offline and then resubmit. If you do accidentally submit and want to kind of withdraw your submission, uh, feel free to email us with the challenge ID and uh, submission ID, whatever you have, and we can delete it on the back end, um, at least before the close of the challenge phase. Okay, um, so we got some questions about links. Yeah, everything will be shared by email is in the presentation and I just dropped a couple of links in the chat. Um, going up to the top, during the challenge validation phase, will challengers be able to clarify evidence or challenge information for those submitted by March 18th? Um, so we want to, you know, respect the close of the challenge phase, which ends on March 18th. I think if we have clarifying questions, um, we'll certainly reach out. This will be influenced by our bandwidth based on the number of challenges that come in. Um, but we certainly want to do our very best at reviewing the evidence and making sure that we have a full understanding of what you are submitting. Um, I don't think we'll be accepting additional information, um, but if you know something is, is very obviously incomplete um, and we feel like we can get that information through a clarifying question, you know, we'll, we'll do our best. But overall recommendation is be sure to submit everything ahead of the March 18th deadline. So we have all of that. And I think one recommendation there, because you are able to submit like zipped files for the evidence, if you want to add like a small word document that just goes through all that you're attaching as evidence, I think that could be a best practice. Just include the evidence and also a small write up on this is what it contains, just so that it helps the review team. Um, so that might be something you consider as you're making those submissions. Yeah, I think like remember that the reviewers on the other side of this are just people who may not be intimately familiar with every single location throughout the state. And so as um, understandable and accessible as you can make the information, the more likely that, you know, your challenge will be valid and complete and move on to the next phase. Um, question, what evidence can be used to show lack of availability in a bulk challenge if the service is not being advertised? So, um, there's a couple of different types of availability challenges. Um, you can review this on the user guide, which I'll pass along. But to summarize, um, the availability challenge is basically services shown on the map as being there, uh, whether that's a certain provider or providing a certain speed. To have a, a valid availability challenge, that means that you're saying that service is actually not available at that location. So evidence of that could be um, doing an online service check if the provider has a website and you can type in the address and you can grab a screenshot that says, sorry, we don't serve your address or coming soon, uh, something like that. Um, you could also do this through a phone call, making sure that you documented you know, the time and who you spoke to, what they said, anything that can give us confidence about that interaction um, and its validity. Um, there's also infrastructure evidence. So if you know that you know there needed to be a certain tower in a certain place for this service to be valid, um, that could be part of your evidence. Um, getting a service check done, so requesting that the provider come out and do an expedited service check um, can also be evidence. So hopefully that, that gives a couple of examples um, to, to share for availability challenge. Um, we have a question, can people take speed tests during the weekend? If they start on Friday, will it still be counted for Monday? Um, so just to walk you through the process, we have the team of data scientists at the Internet Equity Initiative who basically need to download all of the speed test data and evaluate it and understand what is an eligible challenge and then pull that into the correct format. Um, so trying to be respectful of you know their weekend um, and making sure that they have enough time to do that work, which is why we're um, 
requesting that all challenge all speed tests are completed by Friday. Um, so if there is a speed test taken over the weekend, it's possible that they could incorporate it on Monday. Um, but you know, I don't think that that can be guaranteed. Um, I live in a rural area, do not have broadband. A 20 year plan is projected not to include our locations. Um, Lisa, I think we may have emailed. So I'm happy if you send me your address, I can check it on the map and let you know if it's in the plans to be covered by the speed program. I think it is from what I recall, but please just put your address in the chat. Okay, and, and we can check it right after this. Um, in a bulk challenge for availability, do we need individual screen prints for every address in that challenge? Um, so I think it depends on what you are challenging in the availability challenge. And I'm seeing this is a Schuyler County writing. Feel free to join our office hours tomorrow or we can get on Zoom later today and walk through this step by step. Um, but I'd like to point you to the area challenge opportunity. So if you know that there are a lot of locations in one census block that um, fall under this challenge category, all you need is six. You can get a couple more to be safe, but all you need is six to kind of trigger the challenge for the whole area. And um, so if your evidence is um, that the service provider says that they can provide service at those locations, we would need that for all six locations. Um, but if the evidence is something that, you know, captures all of them, then you could just indicate that the evidence applies to all of these locations. Um, so you got a question, how would these challenges support the opportunity to receive broadband? So the goal of the challenge process is to make sure that the broadband availability map that we have is as accurate as it can be. And um, the benefit or I guess what we'll use this map for is to prioritize locations that get um, connected to broadband through the BEAD program, broadband equity access and deployment program over the next five years. So if on this map, your location is marked as unserved, it will be first in line um, to get that funding and get connected. And I can look up this address live just to double check. So it looks like this address is served by the next link provider. So there's 500 over 100 service available. So Lisa, happy to send you that information over email and you can look into it and make sure that that's what you're seeing on your end too. And I think just to add to that, if that's not the case, this would be an option for a good challenge. So if you have you know, previously reached out to them to get a connection or you don't get those speeds, definitely like, you know, participate in the speed test challenge, or if you have any written communication or maybe a screenshot of their website, I think we would want to like, you know, help you get that information in so that your location could be eligible for the funding. And I'll put that information in the chat so you have it. Um, for an ISP that has coverage coming available in the next 30 to 60 days that will provide coverage, but currently shows unserved, what is the procedure? Um, so this would be the planned or existing service challenge. If you have service that will be online by this June, June of 2024, um, you can submit a planned service challenge. Um, how about a 400 unit MDU in Chicago? They only have coax and the internet is shared with direct TV. Um, yeah, I'd love to, Alex, if you wanna share the address by email and we can help workshop that and, and see exactly what it looks like. Um, but if they can't get 100 over 20 speeds, 
in those units, then they're underserved. If they can't get 25 over three, then they should be unserved. Um, a good way to demonstrate this is through by having uh, folks in the building complete speed tests at speedchallenge.org, three speed tests over three days. Or if you can document the infrastructure or lack of infrastructure, um, you can submit that as an availability challenge. And we can look that up live now. I'm looking up Michigan. So what I'm seeing in 1212 South Michigan is that it's served by a couple of providers. Astound provides cable at 1200 over 20 uh, T-Mobile and Verizon offer fixed wireless connection and Xfinity offers cable connection at 1200 over 35. So if that's not the case based on what you're seeing in your experience, um, you would need to document that and then challenge each of those locations and, the, and whether they offer service uh, to those units in the building. Um, another way to do this is by learning about which uh, provider each resident or each unit subscribes to and then asking them to complete speed tests um, based on those subscription numbers. And again, um, we're kind of treating this session like office hours, but if you really want to go into detail and we can share a screen, I think office hours are a great time to do that. Well, thank you very much. I uh, don't see any more questions at this time. Um, so uh, without further ado, we just are very grateful for all of your lunch and learns up to this point. Um, and could you provide just a little bit of direction on any sort of future outreach um, intentions? Yeah, so um, I guess to wrap up on kind of next steps and what to expect. So please submit your challenges through Monday at 11.59 p.m. If you have not pre-registered to participate and you know you want to, we ask that you do that as soon as you can today. Um, and then once you get verified, log in to the portal to make sure that that works. Um, and then let's see, so the challenge phase will close uh, Monday at midnight. Um, after that, we'll start reviewing challenges. Um, we, we may go ahead and cancel our webinar for next week since we won't have much new information for you. And then I think a week after that, we'll start focusing on the rebuttal process and what you need to know on that front. Um, and then, you know, feel free to check the dashboard to see how things are coming along, um, how challenges are submitted. And of course, we'll continue to reach out over email um, with any sorts of updates or resources. Uh, just looking at the final questions in the chat. Yeah, the turnaround time for the pre-registration and access to the portal has been about one day, one and a half days, so quicker than we thought. So uh, we can definitely accommodate more pre-registrations, uh, but the sooner the better. Um, and then in the recap email, we'll have office hours. So tomorrow at 1 p.m. and uh, 3 p.m., if you want to meet today, we can make time, I think after 3 p.m. if you want to just get on the 15 or 30 minute Zoom um, to walk through your specific scenario. And with that, uh, thanks for joining and participating and thanks Nancy for hosting. Thank you, we're so glad to host you all. Um, many thanks to Illinois Broadband Lab in the Illinois Office of Broadband. And uh, on behalf of Illinois Extension, I just wish everyone a good rest of their week. Thanks for all you do in your communities.